This is Unit 2 for the Horsemanship Theory class, Western Saddles and Accessories. Saddle selection is dependent on the type of riding style that you're choosing to do of your horse. And even then you can get more fine-tuned with the event that you're riding your horse in. Saddle selection is also determined by the horse's conformation as well as the, the rider's body type. Horses will naturally carry their weight more over their forehand than their hindquarters. A horse carries 55 to 65 percent of its weight on its front end. We try to, when we ride in a lot of our disciplines, we're, we're always trying to shift that weight back towards the hindquarters so that we can get more engagement from the hindquarters. In a jumping saddle, the rider can get up over the horse's center of gravity and out of the horse's way so that the horse can achieve uh, athletic maneuverability and bascule over the jumps. Racing saddles allow the jockey again to move forward over the horse's center of gravity so that the horse can run as fast as they can. Our stock seat saddles, however, are more designed so that the rider can collect up the horse and move the horse back towards its hindquarters, as well as dressage saddles that really um, focus the rider's energy on uh, engaging the rider, the horse's hindquarters, as well as front end. In reining, the horse's center of gravity is shifted back, um, and that's very comparable, actually, to a, a saddle seat horse whose front end is engaged and elevated and the hindquarters are engaged to support and balance the horse. When we think of the Western Stock Saddle, there's actually many types of uh, saddles to choose from. There's the Pleasure or Trail Saddle, Equitation Saddles, Cutting, Roping, Reining, and even Timed Event Saddles. Western Saddles in general are heavier than your English Saddles. They provide a more secure seat, and obviously there's more saddle covering up the horse, and due to the fenders of the western saddle, there's less contact of the rider's thigh and lower leg to the uh, actual horse itself as compared to an English saddle. The base of the western saddle is actually its saddle tree. And there's different types of tree, but the most popular and sturdy type of tree is a wood tree covered with rawhide. The tree is actually connected um, from the fork to the cantle by two bars on either side. The bars are actually the weight-bearing surface of the saddle that comes in contact with the horse. The bars are what we're primarily concerned with when we're thinking about the fit of the saddle onto the horse's back. And if the bars are well fitted along the horse's back, then we can pretty much say that for a 150 pound rider or an average weighted rider, the western saddle will only apply about three quarters of a pound per square inch to the horse's back. Now compare that to the English saddle that would actually uh, have about one and three quarters pound of pressure uh, distributed over every square inch of the horse's back. And the rationale behind this, even though the Western saddle is heavier, the English saddle covers less surface area so the pressure is more concentrated on a smaller portion of the horse's back. So over time then, we consider Western saddles to be easier on a horse's back. Western saddle rigging allows the saddle to stay in place on the horse's back. A single rigged saddle simply means that it only has a front cinch. 
A double rigged saddle implies that the saddle has both a front cinch as where as well as a rear flank cinch. The seventh eighth rigging is uh, the most popular rigging today. And so most of your um, Western saddles will have the seventh eighth or a full rigged saddle. The trailer pleasure saddle is the most popular saddle in our Western stock seat saddles. It's designed for pleasure riding uh, so that both the horse and the rider has optimum comfort. It's usually lighter weight than uh, a heavier roping saddle might be. And it has higher forks so that the rider has a secure seat. Usually it allows for double rigging so that you can also ride if you want to with a uh, rear cinch uh, to keep the saddle in place, especially on rugged ter terrain up and down hills of trail riding. It also allows for a breast collar uh, to be fastened onto the horse to help keep the saddle in place. The Western Equitation saddle is usually more decorative for showing and it has a deep pocket for the rider's seat. The pocket is placed so that the horse, the rider stays in balance with the horse and is at an optimum uh, ideal riding position at all times. The cutting horse saddle, in contrast, allows the rider to move around quite a bit more uh, on the horse's back. Um, the uh, Swells are high, wide, and straight. There's a tall, thin horn so that the rider can grip the horn when cutting cattle. And the seat is flat, long, and smooth, which allows the rider to shift from side to side easily uh, in motion with the horse as it's cutting cattle. The cantle uh, behind the rider's seat is low, so that it doesn't get in, in the way of the rider as it moves on the horse. The roping saddle has a low rounded fork so that it stays out of the way of the uh, roper's hand. And it also has a deep rough out seat so that it provides extra security for the rider. The cantle is low so that the rider can easily swing its leg and dismount quickly from the horse. The roping saddle also has a large horn to dally the rope, and the steers are hung slightly more forward than uh, other Western saddles. The roping saddle will always have a full double rigging to keep the saddle in place when roping. The barrel saddle, in contrast, is very lightweight. It usually has a short skirt, which either can be rounded, as in this image, uh, or square. It has a rough out seat to provide more security for the rider, and also has a very high fork and high cantle for added rider security. The barrel saddle is usually ridden with just a front cinch so that it stays out of the way of the galloping horse. Cinches uh, are, are uh, below the horse's belly, around the girth area, and the most popular cinch material is the mohair cinch. The mohair allows for wicking to occur so that moisture is drawn away from the horse's skin. It's a very cool material on the horse, um, so as long as it's kept clean, uh, should be comfortable for the horse, even when ridden for long amounts of time. Mohair girths by themselves are quite expensive, so you'll also see a selection of uh, blended materials of mohair, nylon, and wool so that it reduces the cost of the uh, cinch without necessarily reducing as much of the quality of the cinch. In fact, the um, blended materials will stretch less than a pure mo mohair girth. 
Uh, some neoprene uh, materials are now also being used uh, for cinches. Uh, one of the pluses of the neoprene cinch is it's very easy to uh, hose off and to clean. But one of the cons might be that it would tend to um, have more heat associated with it over long periods of riding. Cinches should be checked every ride for damage. Uh, buckles can break. Um, obviously, uh, with your um, mohair material, uh, the yarns are, can break as well and cause extremely serious riding accidents. All cinches should be cleaned after every ride to prevent saddle sores from arising or girth sores. Pads and blankets come in uh, a long range of uh, sizes and shapes. Uh, the purpose of the saddle pad is to reduce pressure on the horse's back, uh, remove water, and let the back cool, prevent the saddle from slipping and rocking along the horse's back, and also to protect the saddle itself from dirt, sweat, and horse hair along the horse's back. Pads can uh, be found in natural fibers, and probably the most popular saddle pad is the Navajo wool blanket. And these are usually doubled in, uh, along the horse's back to provide extra padding. Um, and they will, uh, a good quality uh, Navajo pad will actually provide a lot of contour to the horse. Synthetic pads are also becoming more popular, especially the, um, the felt neoprene uh, pads, which have uh, cutouts along the horse's spine to allow for more aeration along the horse's back. Some people try to uh, fix ill-fitted saddles by applying more pads, and usually this only exasperates the problem of an ill-fitted or poor-fitting saddle. Breast collars are used to prevent the saddles from sliding back on the horse, and this is really important in um, some of our roping events or if you're um, riding on really rough uh, terrain. But also, if you have horses with very round backs or low withers that just invariably have a hard time keeping the saddle placed straight uh, on, the on the back. Breastplates should always be connected to the horse's girth under the chest so that if the horse bends its head down, it doesn't choke from a breast collar that's placed too high up on its neck. Be sure for your uh, quiz that you know the parts of the saddle from this uh, presentation.